For more physics related videos, please subscribe. In this video, we're going to be looking at what angle you must throw a ball in order to maximize the range, assuming that the ball is not caught at the same height as it was thrown. In a previous video, we looked at the case where the ball was caught and thrown at the same height and found that that angle was 45 degrees, assuming you ignore air resistance. In this video, we'll be taking a look at the more general case where the receiver is at any height relative to the thrower. I rated the physics level in this video as intermediate. So, first off, we're going to start off the way we should start off every physics problem, which is by making a sketch of the situation. I'm going to set the height at which the ball is thrown as y equals 0, y being the vertical coordinate. The ball will be thrown with some initial velocity v0 at some angle theta above the horizontal. It will then follow a parabolic trajectory until it is caught at some height delta y. Delta y can be negative if you are throwing to someone below you. The horizontal distance or the range that the ball is thrown I'm going to call delta x. This is the quantity you want to maximize. For this problem we're going to need to use two of our kinematics equations, the one for delta y and the one for delta x. If you don't know where these equations come from I derived them in a previous video so you can check that out. Notice that these equations are functions of time so we're going to have to find the time at which the ball is caught assuming it was thrown at time equals zero. Now velocity is a vector, so the initial velocity is also a vector, meaning it has some length, its speed, and it points in some direction. Since this is a two-dimensional scenario, our vector is going to have an x component, which I'm going to call vx, and a y component, v not y. Notice that I've specified that the y component is the initial y velocity, because the y velocity changes throughout the trajectory. However, I did not specify v not x because the x velocity is constant throughout the trajectory, so there's no need to do so. Now, in terms of our angle theta, I can rewrite vx as v not cosine theta and v not y as v not sine theta. Now we need to find the time at which the ball is caught. This will be the time when the ball reaches a height delta y. So let's take our equation for delta y and solve for time. Notice that this equation is a polynomial of degree 2, meaning it's a quadratic equation in time. So I'm going to rearrange the terms by putting them all on the left side of the equation in order to get them in a quadratic form. Now I can use the quadratic equation to solve for time. Now normally the quadratic equation has two solutions, a plus solution and a minus solution. Both the plus and minus solutions correspond to a time where the ball reaches height delta y. But since we're trying to maximize the range, we want the later time, when it's on the way down. So this would be the plus solution. Also notice that if y is negative, the minus solution will also be negative. This would correspond to a time before we threw the ball, so that doesn't really make sense. So either way, we want the plus solution. Next, I'm going to pull out a factor of v0 over g in front of everything. And now I'm going to call this second term inside the square root alpha, because I don't want to write it a million times. Alpha is essentially a proxy for the height of the receiver, and again, it can be negative. And notice that alpha is dimensionless, and it has a maximum possible value of 1. At this value, sine theta also has to equal 1 in order to make the quantity inside the square root non-negative. If sine theta equals 1, then theta equals 90 degrees, and this corresponds to throwing the ball straight up in the air which would mean that the range in this case is zero. So this is a minimum. Keep that in the back of your mind. It'll come up later on in the video. Now that we know the time at which the ball was caught, we can plug that into our expression for delta x. And notice here that I've also substituted in vx equals v naught cosine theta. If you're enjoying this video so far, please help out the channel by liking and subscribing, and maybe share it with a few friends. Now this expression is a little bit complicated, so I'm going to rework it into a cleaner form using some trig identities. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply and divide by a factor of 2 and bring one of the factors of 2 inside the parentheses. Now I'm going to make use of the double angle formulas for sine and cosine. I can now substitute these in to get an expression in terms of sines and cosines of 2 theta instead of theta. Now I'm going to get rid of the sine squared 2 theta term inside the square root by using the identity sine squared 2 theta plus cosine squared 2 theta equals 1. Next, I'm going to add and subtract alpha squared inside the square root and group some terms together 
to get a nice difference of squares inside the square root. What we want to do is maximize this quantity delta x with respect to theta. So that means we have to take a derivative with respect to theta and set it equal to zero. Note that this will give both maximum and minimum solutions. We already know what the minimum solution is. It's when theta equals 90 degrees. So let's summarize what we have. We have our diagram of this trajectory, and we have this expression for delta x in terms of theta, which we now have to maximize by taking a derivative with respect to theta and setting it equal to zero. So taking a derivative with respect to theta gives us the following expression. I can divide out the term v naught squared over 2g, and I can also divide the whole thing by 2. Now in the second term, I have this ugly square root in the denominator, so I want to get rid of that. So I'm going to multiply everything by the square root, and I'm going to bring this second term, which used to have the square root in the denominator, over to the right-hand side of the equation. Next, I'm going to square both sides to get rid of the square root. Now notice that on both sides of the equation, I have a term proportional to cosine 2 theta plus alpha quantity squared. I'm going to group those two together on the right-hand side of the equation, and it turns out this factors out quite nicely to sine squared 2 theta plus cosine squared 2 theta, which is equal to 1. Now, every term on both sides of the equation is squared, so I can take the square root, remembering that I have positive and negative solutions here. One of these will be the maximum, and the other one will be the minimum. Now we know that the minimum corresponds to theta equals 90 degrees. Plugging in theta equals 90 degrees into this equation reveals that this corresponds to the plus solution. Therefore, the maximum corresponds to the minus solution. Now we can rearrange and solve for cosine 2 theta. Now I'm going to make use of the double angle formula for cosine once again to get an expression for sine squared theta. All that's left to do is take a square root to get that sine theta that maximizes the range is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 minus alpha, remembering that alpha is equal to 2g delta y over v naught squared, which is essentially a proxy for the height of the receiver relative to the thrower. Notice also that if alpha equals 1, we get sine theta equals 1, which corresponds to an angle of 90 degrees. This means that to throw a ball at that height, you have just enough strength to get it there if you throw it straight up. In a previous video, we found that if delta y equals 0, theta equals 45 degrees. And if you plug in alpha equals 0, you'll get sine theta equals 1 over square root of 2, which in fact is the sine of 45 degrees. So this checks out. Now, if alpha is small, we can approximate that theta will be about 45 degrees plus this quantity 1 plus alpha over pi, so a little bit more than 45 degrees. And if alpha is very large and negative, this would correspond to throwing to someone very far below you, so like if you were at the top of a cliff throwing to someone at the bottom of the cliff. In this case, we can take alpha as it goes to infinity to get that theta will approximately be 180 over pi divided by the absolute value of alpha remembering that alpha is very large. So if alpha goes to infinity, theta will go to zero. So in that case, you're essentially throwing the ball straight out. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe, leave a comment if you have any questions, and hit the bell to be notified for the release of future physics videos. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.